all I knew. I clicked on a button, <laughs> signed up this CD, <laughs> and that was my part of the help. And uh, as he sang and practiced on Sunday, excuse me, on Friday, I sat in the far back because to me, in sound, you want to make sure you can hear everything, what needs to be heard, and to have an accompaniment, and then to hear him sing all the way to the back. Uh, brought chills to me. I didn't say it to him that day. I said just how good he was and how well that God has blessed his voice on that practice. And then this morning I said back there, actually I said this, so I said, there's something about some endings of songs that is, I'm going to put it in non-musical terms, but it's so dramatic. And when that dramatic presentation comes at the end of a song, or the crescendo, or the the, the the ending finale of anything. And as he sings the end of that song, I still, even today, stood back there with chills. Not because of a man who stood up here and sang, but because of his heart, because of the words he sang, and because what it means about the kingdom and, and how we are so much a part of it because of what God did for the kingdom. And for a man to stand up here and present, as I, I, I mentioned that downstairs, and I, I don't mention that quite often probably, because you can never make anyone accept the kingdom. You can never make anyone be a part of the kingdom. All you can do is present the kingdom and then hope that what takes place is that they accept God's kingdom to be called a child of that kingdom, child of the king. And that's why it's easy to stand far back and go, wow, the chills are because, man, first of all, I'm part of that kingdom. And there's a man who is singing of the glory of that kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Well, hopefully that uh, does the same for you. And if not, it can. Accept the King, Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you, see there's some things in life you cannot guarantee, but this I can. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and that kingdom that is as in earth, on earth as it is in heaven will be your daily walk until you take your last breath and see the king face to face in the greatest of kingdoms. Guaranteed. Having your Bibles this morning or you can take the Bible in front of you that's in the pew um, to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, um, uh, Mark is, is one, the writer of Mark, uh, Mark the writer, <laughs> he writes in such a way, and I have to say it over and over, with speed and accuracy. Um, a lot of the times you'll look at the other Gospels and they'll have all these other things that are written in the same context because these men walked with the Savior, got taught by the Savior, Jesus Christ, and so in their writings, you, you have things that are so familiar, but Mark, he's like, I'm gonna just, here's what I want to do. I want to be the, like the diary maker. I want to be the one who tells you, this is what Jesus did. This is what Jesus taught. This is what he taught. This is what he taught. This is what he taught. And I love here in Mark chapter four, as we have been going through a few of them, it's the parables. The parables that Jesus taught. The stories that Jesus taught. The, ready? The way that Jesus presented so that those can come to believe and know God himself for who he is and what he does. So I'm at Mark chapter 4, starting at verse 26. There's two parables here I'd like to go through before we leave this morning. Jesus also answered, excuse me, also said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground night and day while he while he's asleep or awake. The seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. For 
refers to leaf blade, pushes through. Then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, for the harvest time has come. Let me say this. This is the one parable that you will not find in any of the other Gospels. Now, I want us to remember just very quickly, uh, in, in Mark chapter 4, uh, in Mark chapter 4, you have the parable of what? The, the, the seed, uh, not the seed, the parable of the, the seed and the sower. Excuse me. Let me put it this way. You have the parable of the sower and the soils, because he threw the seed on the hard ground. He threw the seed on the ground that had a little bit of dirt and a lot of bit of rock. He threw the seed where, uh, remember the, the thorn bushes, the thick, the, 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 the uh, thistles, the, uh, I don't know if, uh, I always kind of chuckle in my head on, on thistles because thistles doesn't sound as rough as what it is, but man, if you have ever stepped on a thistle, <laughs> you will know. <laughs> I'm talking about barefoot. You will know how bad it is to have those with your strawberries that I talked about when talking about the soils. And then it was where you threw seed on that fertile soil. It grew, not only did it grow, but it was 30, 60, 100 times the seed that was tossed. What a beautiful parable. The parable where Jesus, following that parable, he uh, kept the, the disciples and some followers come together and Jesus says, hey, just so we all are on the same page, please accept that my my par not my paraphrasing, my my level of of presenting. Not quoting it verse by verse, but I'm telling you, Jesus gathered them and he said, let me tell you what it means. And he went into detail, the sower uh, 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 and through the seed. And he did went into detail of this ground where the birds came and ate it, what that was, who, the, who they were, the, the soil of the rocks underneath. He, he described everything just so when the disciples left that parable thought process, they knew exactly what their master, what their teacher was giving to them so that they could give it to someone else. Like about Mark, because he gave it to us. Then he talked in Mark chapter 4, the next one was the lamp. You know, can't hide it under a bushel. And I don't know about you guys, but whenever you, I read some of these parables, the kids' songs come to, to my mind. You know what? Kids' songs are, are, are like our hymnal songs that we have, you know. I love Pastor Mark plucks up here, and it's almost like in that tune, and I start singing some of the songs while he's plucking away, you know. Or, or when you read a scripture, and it says, you don't put a lamp under a light under a bushel. No! That's how the song goes. <laughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to what? Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. Won't let Satan, we don't even say the word, we go, won't let Satan get out. <laughs> it, 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 just some wonderful things of a parable of a light and how much we need to be that light that is brought out in a simple story that Jesus told on how important it is to have these understandings. There must be a reason that, and I say that, I not rhetorically. I say that because it's just like some people think there must be a reason. There is an absolute reason why these are gifted to us so that we can be the ones that are growing. So that we can watch out for the soil that we are on. Are we the ones, remember I talked about, surrounded by things that are choking us out? Or are we on that good soil just, just extremely growing? Are we letting our light shine to everyone that we come into contact with? Or are we letting Satan get out? And, and can I say this? That with teaching, with presentation, always comes learning. Okay? You either learn to accept it or reject it, first of all. But when you learn to accept it, man, it, it becomes something. Uh, Lauren is going to college and she has been studying uh, uh, sign language and uh, uh, probably the, the greatest student that she has, even before she gets, gets a degree, is Brother Bud. You know, because <laughs> these two figure out things, you know. And, and, and can I say this, that uh, I have come to appreciate 
a sign language is in, in the idea of symbolism. Symbols, you know, signs to me are symbols. And so I'm going to tell you this. I've told some people this already, but on Wednesday night, especially this past Wednesday, the kids were in, they didn't even have, see, a lot of times I teach with videos. This, I don't even have to tell the story. The video tells them the story. It's on a level that they love. I've told you this before. One of the, one of the greatest series that they really like is where it, the, there's an intro to every story. And the narrator goes, this is Jesus. And Jesus is walking along and Jesus goes, hey, oh. And those kids will sit there when the narrator goes, this is Jesus. And Jesus is about to say, hey, oh. They say, hey, oh, with, the, with Jesus. And so some people go, well, ah, that's not nothing. And I'll tell you what, them kids learn, learn, learn. Memorize and take it all in and give it to someone else. Um, I, I, I don't have enough time to go in. I just heard a story. Can I, can I tell you a story? Yes. Ah, you should ask Connie about this story. That way I'm not telling all the stories. About how there was something that took place in Elijah's class about bad language. Ask her the story. I'm telling you, people learn. Um, if, if you want a scripture that goes with that, hey, there's, it, it, it says... Uh, uh, and I believe, uh, let me go to, I believe it's actually in Colossians. I could be wrong, maybe in James, one of those two. And it says, stop being a dirty mouth. That's my paraphrase. Look it up. It says, stop being a dirty mouth. Okay. You can look it up because there's other areas of that dirty mouth. <laughs> so look it up. But anyways, that took place because a little boy learned a dirty mouth is not good. That's how the story's going to go when you, when you hear it. But this past Wednesday, the kids are going to back to the assignment thing. The kids learned a story in Luke. And the story in Luke uh, just kind of slipped me because it went in relation to the story of the fruits of the Spirit. Oh, the story in Luke was good fruit does not grow on bad trees. And bad fruit does not grow on good trees. Lesson. If you think you can be bad and have what good is good of God, you're absolutely wrong. If you think you that if you have this knowing of the good of God and you follow God and his teachings, as Jesus gives us in parables, you will discover that your life is good. Just the way it is. So then they had to find out, well, what does it mean to live this good life? What does it mean to have this good fruit? So then we went to, uh, no video involved, we went straight to Galatians, the fruit of the Spirit. And those kids, I was telling Pastor Mark, that's what it was, and Cindy this morning, I think, that uh, um, I asked them to give symbols for the fruits of the Spirit. One day we're going to stand up here and we're going to show you the symbols to the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Um, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness. Because uh, 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 I, I got a kick out of, uh, and I'll give you one, because it was one of my favorites. And it was, because kids are kids. Adults can be this way too sometimes. But kids are kids. They're all over the place. They won't listen. They won't sit down. They won't do their lesson. They're, they're, it's all about them and nobody else. And so what, the last fruit of the Spirit is what? Self-control. And I'm like, so how are you going to do self-control? And this is exactly how they did self-control. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. They came up with all these other own. It was one of the coolest things because self-control means sit still. Don't move your hands. Don't look away. Don't self-control will allow you to take in. And I'm like, wow, these kids have got it. <laughs> so, stories. The parables, they are so important in teaching us to give to someone else. That's my whole intro here, to give to someone else. And so here we have in this area of text a parable that is not found in other gospels, nor is it explained. Okay? And nor am I going to try to explain it because I have studied. And there's people that have, well, here's this theory over here, and here's this theory over there, and here's this theory over here. And so I look at it, and, and, and I'm going to tell you this, because this is what I firmly believe, is that when you read a parable that has no explanation, you can always go to the parables 
right before it, understand seeds and understand soils and understand other things. You can go to other areas of Scripture and have an understanding of birds. Are they evil? Are they good? Um, see, I'm telling you, they're all over the place because you know uh, the birds in the first parable did what? Stole the seeds. That's not good. The bird that came down on Jesus Christ, the dove, a bird, you're going to say that's bad? No. So you have to say, okay, God, what is it that is about this parable right here? The kingdom is like the farmer who scatters seed on the ground. And now some of us just kind of, you can just be smart with it. The farmer is not Jesus. Why do you say that, Pastor Rick? Well, first of all, it says that the farmer not only threw the seed on the ground, but he doesn't understand how it grows. I'm going to tell you this. From what I understand of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, they know everything. So I'm just going to say, well, the farmer is just one throwing seed. So may I say this to you this morning? Maybe we should be that seed thrower. Because what is seed? The seed up above in the upper scriptures of parables, the seed is the word of God. It is the gospel. It's unchangeable. It's not like you can mess it up. If you give the gospel to someone, if you give what is uh, of God to someone, that's spreading the seed. Now let me go a little deeper. Because like I said, those kids learn about good fruit, bad fruit, right? You can grow bad stuff. You can grow bad stuff. In fact, you can spread bad stuff. And so as people look at your life, remember that light that shines? Your light can be an evil light too. See, I, you know, well, that, that's how that parable was, Pastor Mark. You're right. That wasn't. That was about being the light of God. But I'm going to tell you what. People still see the darkness in you if you are the one who is darkness everywhere all the time. Good fruit, bad fruit. Good tree, bad tree. So if you're giving this, if you're seed throwing, if you're the farmer going, I hate your stinking guts. You're a piece of garbage. You're worthless. You're nothing. You don't deserve to be here. You don't deserve this. And we begin, see, we talk about, people, we talk about, I don't The nation of media talks about how divisive this is and divisive that is. You know what? The media can do this because they're bad trees spreading bad stuff. I mean, you got to take it. You know what? It's like I, I, uh, I read a, news, a newspaper, okay, and I read it with a grain of salt. Why is that? Because I can look at something and go, that's just wrong. But just because it's in black and white on a newspaper doesn't make it right. And so here's the thing. What seeds are being laid out? So when, now I'm going to tell you this, as a farmer who lays out the seed, even though he doesn't understand how it grows, there's something about the seed that he's laying out there. So me, the individual who's following Jesus Christ, I'm throwing seeds out to people so that they see the Savior. And, and God, you know, God's going to make it grow. Amen. The world wants to figure out that, okay, if, I, if I'm the seed thrower, then I have control over everything. I control how high it grows, how tall it grows, how much it grows. But you know what? When you are a seed thrower of God, you are not in control of any of that growth. Sure. You're just the seed thrower. What seeds are you throwing out? I love the parable. I don't know. I'm going to take some of you back to school. Maybe not. In, in, in a class that I sat in one time, and as I even studied for this scripture, I kind of looked at it. I have seen the video that is, what do they call it, speed up, speed it up or something like that, where you see the seed goes into this ground, into the soil. They even cut it, you know, and, and so you can kind of see dirt and kind of see the seed. And then you see the seed break open, sprout up, and it wiggles really fast and turns into a flower or whatever because that's how it grows. And even looking at a video of a seed growing, you sit there and go, how does that actually, actually happen? Is it the, the nutrients in the soil? 
Is it what kind of water do you use? Do you use arrowhead water or do you use glacier water? Or do you use distilled water? Whatever. What makes that seed crack open and grow the way that it does? You know what? It grows up and when, and see, when Jesus tells stories, even this one that's not explained, can I say this? Some of it is kind of easy in this thought process. People farmed for food. That's life. And so in farming for food, what a great story to tell. Do you know when you throw a seed it's, and it goes in the ground, it's going to grow? And when it's done growing, and it's at its fullest, it gets harvested. That is the way it is. You don't have to decipher it or figure it out. That is the way it is. And so as it takes place, Within this parable, I'm going to not, please don't take it as me explaining it, because I'm not. The only thing that I did say is throw seeds. Watch what kind of seeds you're throwing. Because you are the seed thrower, no matter how you look at it. The only thing that I can truly get out of this unexplained parable here is this. That it always points to God. Because in my thought process, God is the one who took me and the seed was planted within my spirit and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and he has been growing me ever since that day. Yes. Now I'll go to another scripture. He's also pruning me. And kind of can say amen to that because there are some things that got pruned away that did not need to be here. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? This is how God grows things. I can't explain it. I don't know it to, to its fullest, but I know what he, he does as I'm growing. If you look at your life, you'll see the same thing with yours. How you are growing in God. Don't need to explain it, but I do know this, that when he is done with this person here, with his purpose, and the harvest comes. In fact, in his public ministry, he never taught without using parables. 
But afterward, when he was all alone with his disciples, he explained everything to them. Let me say this in his last few moments. This parable, this is a great parable, okay? <laughs> because people freak out over it. Man, Jesus should have known the mustard seed is not the smallest seed in the world. I have some on my desk. It looks like a little pebble, you know, very tiny, tiny pebble, you know, uh, way smaller than a BB, way smaller. But there's seeds that are smaller. There's flower seeds that are super duper small, even smaller than a mustard seed. The celery seed is even smaller than a mustard seed. And so people freak out in such a way of, oh, Jesus, he's such, because he's such a mistake maker on seeds that he supposedly made, we should not follow him. This is how the world of, of false teaching is just so messed up. Because we've got to go like this. It's a parable. It's a, in fact, he started off, how should I illustrate a story to you? And as he talks about it, as people are so messed up on the size of the seed or the size of the plant or the branch of how it grows or the birds that fly in or anything like that, how about this? How about, oh man, Jesus is telling something that's just going to radically master our mind. In the sense of, you know what, a very small seed is going to grow into a very, very, very large plant. And even its branches are going to allow space for birds to fly in and nest. You can go into the Old Testament, you'll find a story just like that. With a, with a divine purpose. But Jesus, in telling this story here in the New Testament, uh, it, it, it goes with this. For me, in these last moments, a small seed. Twelve guys hanging out with the Savior. A small seed. Or even when there's twelve guys hanging out with the Savior. Go back to, you know, you got to walk through Jesus' ministry. What was it? You have one gospel that says his opening ministry was where his mom said, Hey, Jesus, they're out of wine at this thing, at this wedding. What can you do? I know you can do. Hey, you guys, just talk to the Savior. Just talk to Jesus. He'll take care of it. What? Water and wine. Boom. My ministry. Go, la, la, la. Go on, go on, go on, go on. But you have here where Jesus takes on 12. Man, go, come up to children's uh, kid zone. How did he call? He walked by and saw some guys in a boat. Get out of the boat. Come on. You too. Get out of the boat. Come on. You, the tax collector. Get away from the table. Come on. You, physician. Come on. Get your brothers. Oh, your brothers brought you. <laughs> now, Andrew brought Peter. you. <laughs> People put Peter way up here. You know what? If it weren't for a brother Andrew, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because they all had a divine purpose. These 12 were taught by the Savior. And then if you keep reading, the fire, man, there's other followers. We talked about this a week ago. How they, they followed him like an entourage of, of, of rock and roll groupies. That's what I'm thinking. Of all these groupies, besides the 12 things, groupies were following. And they went everywhere Jesus went. They crossed over. Hey, he got the boat. So be 
I love to have in the parable. Pastor Mark, come on, we're just about to close. Jesus used many similar stories and illustrations to teach the people as much as they could understand. That's, that's Mark chapter 4, verse 33. See, I, I think on parables, I think on his teaching, and I, under, I come off with this. I highlight that verse. Not to be a cop-out, but to be a growth encourager. Because he's going to teach me everything I can understand. All that I can understand. So I look to him as I grow for more understanding. More understanding. The church on this block is part of the kingdom. The church on this block was designed as part of the kingdom. I'm going to go deeper. The church on this block that was designed by man or woman, whoever was involved in those small little seed that took place here, <coughs> was to grow. Not because of just what they did. See, that's the thing in a parable. The way Jesus made it out Farming takes watering, and that's why we had that New Testament verse. I planted the seed, Apollos watered, but God did the increase. God did the growth. It's in a, such a perspective that know this. This seed on this corner has been planted. This seed has been watered. This seed has been cultivated, but it is still growing and will grow until the harvest. Until God calls us home. We have people begging for this piece of land. Begging for this church. Which will not happen. Why? Because a seed of God divinely was planted. And God has not called this to stop being what it is. How do I know that? Because you will not see another church of God movement church anywhere around this eight block radius, 20 block radius, God has placed us here, not because we are the church, but because we are part of his kingdom, and we have to be the light. We have to be the seed throat. That is why we are here. What contributions will you make to being the seed planter? The musts that are needed with this place here, the musts is we are to teach and give opportunity to the importance of prayer and fasting for the divine purpose of this church. Why do I say that? Because here's what we do know. Oh, please know. Don't take offense to it, but know as we grow, both spiritually and physically, there's things on the physical end that we cannot do. And because we cannot do physically, therefore, we need to be placed within us the ability to pray and fast. And, and I'm going to go deep. Not just, oh God, bless our church. I'm talking about you pray for, we've already got per calendar individuals, you pray specifically for other things. You know what, I, and um, Brother Bud brought up for those that, 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 that helped uh, beautify the outside as the time that they were alive. If you can, the things that come up that are like that, and you can't do it, or you can't make it, that is when you pray and fast. Dear Lord, there are people that are touching the things that are physically seen by others. They are the moment of light on this block, in this time frame. So I'm going to pray and fast this day. I might not be there, but I will pray and fast this day that that light shines. It's easier to say it up here. We now need to put it in our hands out there. 
Okay, there's nothing, guys, there's nothing wrong with not being able to physically do something. There is something wrong if we as a people decide to no longer pray the church as it moves forward. There are people, I was telling, uh, telling this morning, that it is a known fact that people who don't go to church would go to church if they were asked. If you were to ask people here, that is why you're here today. There are people that are asking others still today. There are people that are making presentations still today. Let me encourage you. Keep doing it. Don't look at the seed that doesn't seem to be growing. Because the story is that they went to bed, they got up. They went to bed, they got up. But there's more to it, I'm sure. And so please be in prayer. Because as you are presenting, let God be the one who grows. Amen? Amen. See, see I, I'm trying to, I'm not giving you an out, I'm not coming out at you. I'm trying to say, this is what's going to be teached in the next times coming forward. You will pray more and more and more and more. As you walk, you'll go, God, man, bless this church. Bless the lights that are shining within now I'm going to ask this guy, there's going to be a need for teachers to teach eight kids. That's hard, just, to, just so everybody knows, eight kids is hard. It really is. Four kids is hard, unless you can get them to do stuff control. So pray, God, and you know what, and here's the beauty of our church, I'll say it again, I said it last week, there are people that are now talking, pray for you. Not that the kids coming up will be youth. Yeah, pray for that. But pray that youth will come in. Pray for college-age kids that we do already have and that there will be more for our life. Pray for those who are in their 30s to 60s, 30s to 50s, 30s to up there, that more will come and be alive. Pray for those that are above that, that they will continue to be the light. How? How can I be the light? How can I pray more? How can I have these vigils of prayer? How can, how can I be that part of the must for the purpose, the divine purpose of this church? And I'm going to say this. The reason I'm presenting in the last minute like this is because it's an old Boy Scout model, which I was a Boy Scout, and leave that alone. But one of the things was a Boy Scout model is be prepared. And I say this, that has always been God's model. I give to you what is needed for your understanding so that you will be prepared. Another version of being a light. Let us stand. I look around and, and I, I, I present this question I, and I, I just do. Are you part of the kingdom? Are you a child of the king? If so, are you still throwing good seeds? Guys, if we make mistakes, hey, we make mistakes. God, please forgive me that my seeds might be good. Keep throwing seeds. Let's pray. God, thank you for these moments that we've had together. about these parables is it's not who we want to be, who we are, but it is always you. God, may we remove the things that are selfish. May we, God, we ask, actually ask your Holy Spirit because some of these things we can't do. We struggle with it. Help us to be the better light. Help us to be the better seed thrower. Help us to be better in our prayer of, of your divine purpose in this place. Help us to be better with your Holy Spirit to see what lies ahead as we grow. In Jesus' holy name, may it always point and